Good morning, we give you a very warm welcome to our service. Will you all stand with us, please? We're going to uh, begin our time together. I'm going to lead you in a few songs of praise. Worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great. And break every chain, oh God, you have the great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have the great things. You have the great things. You have the great things. We 
church this morning let's just lift our voices let's lift our voices and welcome the holy spirit here let's lift our voices and really glorify god's name use your own words use your own words let's just take a moment and really praise and glorify our lord and savior praise your name lord jesus praise your name lord jesus Jesus. We're just going to sing through that one more time. And as we do it, um, I want us to really just focus our hearts on the faith that we have within our hearts for healing and for, 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 for different situations that we're going to pray about in a second or two. But let's just really, really sing this with, with a passion, with a love, with a knowledge that we have a Savior that can do absolutely anything. And there's nothing that can hold him back. So let's sing this with a real, real understanding, a real faith that God's going to move here this morning in the different situations we're going to pray for in a moment. Praise your name. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the King. No rival, you have no equal. 
powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name. Lord, we just, we just thank you, Lord, as we come together this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you are here amongst us. And Lord, we just, we're go, Lord, we're going to pray for people this morning. And I just, I just, I just pray, Lord, that, that as we pray, Lord, that you move amongst us, Lord. Move amongst us, Lord. I just want to encourage you this morning. Um, we're going to be praying in a second for Dylan, but, but, um, there, I want, I'm sure there's many people in here that have a need this morning, so I'm going to ask you to do something. If you have a need this morning, just pop your hand up. Keep it up, and people, please, let's be church. Let's do this together. Let's pray for those that have their hands up. So if you're close to somebody with their hand up, go and lay hands on them and pray for them. And we're going to pray with faith that God's going to move in a mighty way this morning, and there's going to be healing in this house. We just... So just take a few minutes, pray for those around you, and then we're going to pray for Dylan. Dylan has to go in the hospital on Tuesday, the Alderhey Hospital, and on Wednesday he's going to have a very serious spinal operation. So we're just going to pray for Dylan um, in a moment, but let's pray for each other for a few minutes. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, we... We praise your name. We glorify your name, Lord. We, we, we just, we just love you so much, Lord. And we, we just today we just ask you, Lord, to move in this place, Lord. Move in this place, Lord. Lord, I pray for each and every one of these people, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, just move. Move amongst. Move amongst. Praise your name. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you know each and every situation that's going on in our lives, Lord. Lord, we don't need to write it down on a piece of card or, or, or anything like that. Lord, you know what's going on, Lord. And Lord, we come to you this morning with many different situations. But Lord, we trust you. We know that you love us so much. We know that you have every single situation in our lives covered, Lord. And Lord, we just focus on you this morning. We focus knowing that you are in control, Lord. Lord, I especially pray this morning for Dylan, Lord. Lord, we bring Dylan to you now, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, for uh, the surgeons as they, as, as, they, as they operate on Wednesday, Lord, but we pray for a miracle, Lord. We pray for a miracle, Lord, that, that, that not only will this operation go well, that, that, but that Dylan will be completely healed, Lord. Lord, we pray that in faith, Lord, knowing that you, that, that, that you can do anything, Lord, and we just ask you, Lord, today to, to touch him in, in, in a miracle, in a, in a mir miraculous way, Lord, that just, just blow our minds, Lord. Lord, we love you so, so much. We love you so, so much, Lord Jesus. 
We praise your name, Lord. We just pray, Lord, for every other person that stood today. And I pray your, just your healing the power into this room, Lord Jesus. We just love you, Lord. Praise your name. We're just going to continue to worship in a different way. Um, but we're going to do our tithes and offerings. Um, now, so, so as the containers are passed around, if you're part of Lakeside, um, please, please uh, be part of that. But I just pray that, I just say to you that if you're here and you, you're for the first time, just let the, the containers pass you by. There's different ways to get involved in this. So they'll come up on the screen. Um, there they are behind us now. So just as the, the tithe offering goes around, the, the worship team are going to lead us again in another song.
There's many things that, as a church that, 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 you, that you're good at, but one of the best things that you do is your community spirit. So we're going we're gonna to take that moment as we do every week and have our minute mingle. So please go and say hello to someone, welcome them, make them feel um, as part of the family here. Okay, so if we could start to take our seats again, that would be much appreciated. We're nearly too good at community. <laughs> right, okay guys, we're gonna we're gonna start the announcements in a moment. I want to obviously give you a big welcome this morning, and if you're here for the first time, hopefully you were given a pack on the way in, and if you were, please could you, could you fill in the leading others into life, I'm new here. It just gives us the opportunity to, to get in touch with you and to make you feel even more welcome, and if you do fill this in, Chris, Chris. There's too much of a, a winning spirit in this church at the minute with Liverpool, so just keep keeping it. So, so if you fill it in, you will get one of our very special Lakeside pens. Um, yesterday, uh, yes, we have our, our, our very special friends, John and Suzanne Hanover from, from Northern Ireland, and Suzanne spoke yesterday morning to the ladies, and they got a pen each yesterday, and they did. 
and they didn't understand the significance of it, but they now they do now. They do now. Okay, we're going to look at some announcements, some really important things um, that are happening. First of all, we're going to look at the, the if the first slide just can come up, and maybe it's me. I'm sorry, yeah, it's me. Um, team night. There's a team night tonight. It's for anybody at all that helps in any way whatsoever on a Sunday. So please, if you do that, please come out. It's not just exclusive to those that are already part of the teams and the volunteers. If you want to become part of something or, or just want to come along and hear the different things so that you can volunteer and be part of things on a Sunday, please come along tonight at 6 o'clock and it will run through to 8 p.m. It's, this is re it's really important that we come together at the start of the year and we talk about different things and we celebrate what's happened and the things that we're going to be doing in the future. So please come along to this. Make an effort and be here tonight if you can. Um, also, our life group, um, the, the new sheets are, are, are out in the foyer to sign up for. Some of you have already signed up online. If you've done that, you don't need to sign up again. Um, but the sheets are there for anybody that wants to sign up for those groups, which uh, commence again this week. Um, I just want to say, not, not making one group more important than the other, because they're all really, really important. Um, but I just want to say to the men, we're running a group for six weeks, um, David's Mighty Men. It's, I know I'm taking it, but it's not my Mighty Men. You've got to understand that. <laughs> but you know what? At the end of it, it would be fantastic if we had a group of men in this church that were focused together on the same thing and really, really just doing the things that men are meant to do. So I want to encourage you, please, if you're a man here and you haven't signed up for another group or you, or you don't have a group to go to, please sign up for it and come to this over the next six weeks. Um, the groups, they're, they're very important. i have seen three words earlier on and just, it just really encouraged me. Connect. It's so important to be connected as a church. Grow. When we connect and we, and we rub off each other, we, we, we start to grow together and grow. grow a, and with, then we thrive. And I don't know about you, but... I want to be part of a church that's thriving this year and, and thriving more than it's ever th done before. I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of what the, the plural to thrive is, so I'm just going to leave it at that. You know me, you know me. If we don't get a laugh, I haven't been up here. Um, we're focused very much on our Alpha. Alpha has been an amazing thing, tool that we've used over the last number of years, but recently the last Alpha course was really, really successful. And we're, we're starting the year off with another Alpha course, and we're really excited about it. And we, we want you to pray for Sue and her team um, as, as, we, as we step into this. But, but next Sunday night, we've got a really special guest coming for a special launch night, uh, Rod Williams. He's been here before. He has an amazing anointing upon him for evangelism. Um, so it's nearly like, a, it's nearly like a, a double dunter, as we would call it in Northern Ireland. We've got someone who's coming that will speak into the lives and the hearts of the people directly when, when they're here, but also it will encourage them to sign up for the Alpha course. So this is a, a really special event, an important event next Sunday night. And I want to encourage you to, to, to go out this week. We've got little cards. Some of these have already been using them, but we've still got some left. And they're not going to be any use to us after next Sunday. So please take these cards, give them out to your friends and your family, and invite them to this next Sunday night. 6 p.m. start. You don't have to sign up for it. Um, we, we, we just come along. Bring your, bring your friends, bring your family. This is an opportunity, guys, an opportunity that all, all you need to do is hand the card and invite the people and let God do the rest. Um, through Rod and for, through the Alpha team um, going forward. We also have um, a special event coming up on the 8th of February here. Um, I Am Andrew is to do with the, the, the Billy Graham um, Trust and, and also Franklin Graham, who's going to be speaking in Liverpool in June. And we, have, we are one of the churches that, um, they're, that they're coming to do training at. So on the 8th, of February, Saturday the 8th of February at 10 o'clock through to 1 o'clock, we're going to be um, doing some training here on evangelism. And I just want to encourage you, 
There's no obligation by coming on that morning to actually be part of the event, but obviously they need volunteers and helpers. But what you are going to be trained up in is, is evangelism and how to speak to those people around you, how to speak to your neighbors, how to speak to your friends. And honestly, if we've got an opportunity as a church to be trained up in that way together, it's, all it's going to do is help us in our goals and our vision in the church plant and in the reaching out in their community. So let's take this opportunity. Let's come along um, on the 8th of February, put it in your diaries, keep it free. It's three hours of really good, solid training that, that can only but help us as we try to win Southport for Jesus. Fundraising and the Cambodian flag. I'm going to invite a few people up onto the stage um, to explain a few things. I'm going to see if I can get the mic working. Sorry. Um, first of all, we're going to invite a very special young lady, Rebecca, and her dad, Mike. And they're going to come up now, and we're going to just find out um, from them what fundraising that they're doing and why. So, so um, Rebecca, would you like to tell the church what you're doing? I'm raising money for Cambodia so because they haven't got much money, so I'm raising money by doing a walk at so my church. Okay. So, so, so we got an email this week, and Mike, do you want to just explain what, what Rebecca said to you? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so we were just um, sitting on the bed, and she goes, Dad, I, I want to... Um, have a stall, can I sell in front of the house? And I was like, well, there's not many people gonna walk past the front of the house to sell water, to be honest. And she goes, can I go to the park? And I was a bit like, oh, it's a bit funny nowadays, you just like show up with a stall in the park. <clears throat> so then um, Suzanne was like, oh, why don't we um, email Richard and see if um, you can sell it at church? And, and obviously it was like completely fine. And, and it, <clears throat> that's why she's got a little store, but it's all her idea. She just come out of it in the blue, and we're like, okay. Uh, so we just went with it, and she just says, I want to raise money. So. Well, I... I, don't, I don't know about you, but for me, to see someone so young with a heart for other people and thinking of children who are poor across the world and wanting to bless them, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. So guys, for the next three weeks, um, Rebecca's gonna be out selling her water in the, in the foyer. Please don't walk past her. If you walk past her without a bottle of water, it's gonna be like the walk of shame. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not, not, trying to, not, not trying to embarrass you or anything else, but, but this, this, this young lady is a superstar, and, I, and we just are so thankful. And on behalf of the children in Cambodia, I want to say a massive thank you for your beautiful heart. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Now, I'm going to invite Leanne up, and she's going to tell you some, about some fundraising towards the team that's heading out in February. Okay, so I'm one of the ladies that's decided to um, go to this trip to Cambodia, um, my first time ever outside of Europe, so really, really. <laughs> um, and I'm traveling there on my own. So we've decided to do two fundraising events. The first one is next Saturday. Um, us ladies, we deserve a bit of pampering, so I've decided to uh, do some haircuts. Kelly's going to do haircuts um, and gents' haircuts too. Ladies, if you want facials, waxing, anything like that, anybody that doesn't know, in a previous life, I used to be a beauty therapist. Um, so if you want anything like that, I'm happy to do that. Um, waxing is one of the things that I'm doing. So Bear Grylls says <laughs> that... To, in order to grow, you must get outside of your comfort zone. So if any fellas want to do a uh, sponsored chest wax or leg wax, I am very happy to do that. Um, the second event 
is a, some of you have been to my cupcake evenings. Um, so instead of doing cupcakes, we've decided to do biscuit decorating. And you can learn all about how to decorate biscuits in various different ways and learn how to flood a biscuit. And that does not mean that when you drop your biscuit in your cup of tea that it's flooded. That's not what it means. So lots of different events. Um, all, the all the beauty stuff is all different prices. I've got price lists. I'll be upstairs if you want to sign up for any of those. Um, and the, the biscuit decorating is £12. You need to book in advance for that, please, because... Um, I need to know how many biscuits I've got to bake first. Okay? Thank you so much. I don't even know where to start after that. Um, I will come and get my hair cut and so. <laughs> it still needs looking after it. <laughs> Do you know, it's too, it's too long at the minute, and I never preach with long hair. I'm just pointing that out. So I will, but the, the, but the, the chest wax, I'm leaving that to, to Matt, because, 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 because I've already done that, and trust me, you only ever do that the once. <laughs> once, never again. Um, I just want to say to you, look, Lots of brilliant things, and Leanne, thank you, and the, to, the, to the ladies that are taking part and helping with that, the fundraise for the team. If you can't come along, or, or, or that's just not really what you can, if you want to make a donation, please do. Um, we, we, we appreciate any help at all, anybody that can, that can help in whatever way at all, so thank you so much. Um, and keep praying for the team. Um, there's, there's six of them heading out. Um, George is going for the first time. Esther, obviously, well, she, she's not going for the first time. Um, there's Lindsay and Ruth are going back. Um, we've got Leanne and we've got Emma. And they're, they're, it's going to be a fantastic trip for them, but also for the Cambodians. So just remember to pray for the team. Thank you so much. I'm going to invite Matt up um, and we're going to pray for him. But as we do that, um, we're going to release our young people. Um, we're going to be praying in a second for you guys as you go and um, just have a wonderful time out in, in youth church. Matt. We're just going to pray for Pastor Matt before he, he brings God's word. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for, for, for the fact that you care about every part of our needs, Lord. And I just pray this morning, Lord, as, as Matt comes, Lord, as, as, he, as he speaks and he brings your word, Lord, that you just anoint him afresh, Lord. Lord, I pray you give him a freedom, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that, he, that you speak to each of our hearts, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you use him to, to challenge each of us, Lord. And that as, as, as your words come out of his mouth, Lord, that, that, that we go away today refreshed, Lord, but challenged and ready for something new in our lives, Lord. I just pray your blessing, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Morning. Morning, morning, morning. If you've got a Bible, turn with me to Matthew 22. We're in week two of our, our New Year's series, looking at what really matters. And uh, this morning, I want to just direct us just to one particular scripture, which, which to me is, is the pinnacle of, of our faith. And so we're going to read Matthew chapter 22, and we'll, uh, we'll dive into a few things this morning. Matthew 22, starting at verse 34. But when the Pharisees heard that he, that Jesus, had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great commandment. And first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. I want to speak to you this morning from a very, very simple title, but something that I'm going to leave up on the screen for the whole morning because I believe that it is both a call and a challenge to us as, as, as the church and, and as followers of Jesus. So I want to speak to you this morning about being all in. It's what we're called to be, isn't it? We're called to be a people that are all in. So would you pray with me this morning? Father, 
in these few moments that we share together, we're asking that you would fill us again with your spirit. We're asking that you would speak to us this morning, that you would give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would leave this place knowing not just your word better, but so we would leave this place knowing you better. That's why we've come this morning, and that's why we've lifted up your name is so that we would see you more clearly, and we would know you in greater depths and in greater measures than ever before. Holy Spirit, this morning, would you say what it is that you want to say? challenge us. We know that your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It is active and alive. So this morning, would your word accomplish everything that you need it to? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Have you ever been afraid of commitment? Have you ever been afraid to commit to something? Growing up, I, I, I'm very sporty, and I know that, that this story will shock you because I know that you see me as this supreme specimen of athletic ability. I know that's how you view me. I know that I am most of yours heroes, and, and this story will probably knock a few holes in that. But growing up, we as a family used to go swimming. I'm not a bad swimmer, but one thing that I don't like is water. I, I just don't like, I don't like water. I wasn't made to be in the water. I don't have gills. And so we would go swimming and be okay swimming. But if you have a sibling, how many of you know that sibling rivalry is a real thing? Yeah. So I have a younger sister. And if my younger sister, who coincidentally is Leanne, she leads the kids ministry. If, uh, my, if my younger sister is better at something than me, we have a problem. Because that is not the way that it is intended to be. I am supposed to dominate and win every activity and everything that we do. And we would go swimming and Leanne had no fear of going underwater. No fear at all. She would completely immerse herself under the water and swim around. And I am the, the big, strapping, strong, brave, fearless nine-year-old that, that should be braver than his little sister. And I'm there, she's underwater and I'm there, ready? <laughs> Done. I can't physically, I just couldn't immerse myself in, so she'd go under, she'd say, do it with me, I'd be like, okay. And, and that, was, that was me. I, I, there was so much fear of commitment that I couldn't put myself any further in. And yet, relating that, if, if we look at this scripture that Jesus gives us, the, the great commandment, to me, this is an all-in commandment. He's not asking for a little head dip. He's asking that we would completely immerse ourselves in the love of God. So we're called to be an all-in people. And this, 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 this scripture is interesting because the context is that the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, all the religious leaders, are trying to trap Jesus. They're trying to get him to say something that will cause anger to rise up in the people so that they can kill him, which they eventually do. Fortunately, he didn't stay dead, but we'll get there in a minute. So they try and trap him, and they ask him, which, what's the greatest commandment? They get a lawyer, an expert in the law, and to ask him, what is the greatest commandment? So it, through, we got the Ten Commandments all the way in the Old Testament, but up until this point now, the religious leaders have managed to somehow make over 600 laws and commandments, and now they want Jesus to give him the greatest one, knowing that if he says the wrong thing, He's, he plays into their hands, and Jesus is, is the most wise person that ever lived. He is God. He is all-knowing, and in this moment, he chooses to answer that the, the first and the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and in Mark's gospel, it goes on to say, and all your strength. It's an all-in commandment, and, and the, the, the leaders are struggling now because they now can't trap him because he even goes on to say, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. For on these commandments, all the law and the prophets, the Old Testament, it hangs on these. I always think Jesus didn't come to eradicate law. He came to fulfill it. Over 300 prophecies Jesus fulfilled, didn't disregard. We may now be under grace, but there are important aspects of the commandments and important aspects of the law that we still need to live this is why, to me, what really matters is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. This, even for Jewish people, is so, so important. It's something part of a, a, a daily ritual, morning and evening, they would do called the Shema. This was part of their prayer, part of the central prayer that they would do every single day, every morning and every night. They would pray that they would love the Lord their God with all their heart, all their soul, all their mind, and all their strength. 
it was so, so important to them that they did that. And I wonder if, because we pray for revival a lot. We want to see God's spirit move in our land. And I wonder if we don't see it yet because the church has lost a little bit of the all-in attitude that it used to have. You read through Acts and the apostles and disciples were all in people. What really mattered to them was that before anything and everything, they loved the Lord their God with every part of their being. I wonder if we'd lost that. I wonder if we've diluted it a little bit with, well, I love God with a bit, but this little bit I'll save for myself. I wonder if I'll I'll give God everything I've got on Sunday, but Monday to Saturday, I'll just kind of push it to the side because that's easier to do. See, really, God is asking for our total being. He's asking for every single part of us to belong to him. And I don't think it's too much for him to ask. God, our God is an all-encompassing God. And I love this scripture because in this moment, he turns our gaze away from, from the law of God into the God of the law. He turns us away from rituals and rites that need to be done to now look at God. It's easy to get caught up in law. It's easy to get caught up in we need to do this and this has to be done this way. And those things are important, but when they take precedent over God, over our relationship with him, because that's why we've been saved. Jesus died so that we could be brought back into relationship with the Father. In in the Garden of Eden, that's what was initially the original design was that we would be in relationship. This this call to be all in is to be all in a relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And that is what is available to us today. It calls us to be an all in people. And part of this is where the commandment that you shall have no other gods before me comes in. Because it's easy to have other gods before God. Can I tell you what one of the things that I struggle with that sometimes takes precedent over God? I'm a pastor, so this is really bad. But for me, it's football. I know I don't talk about it much, um, and so it's, it's very, very surprising, but for me, something that I struggle keeping the right priorities is football. I will watch it a lot. I will talk about it a lot. I will research it. I know more about Man United than I do some of Scripture, and I'm not saying that to boast because that is not something to be proud of, but the truth is that there are things in life that will try and take the place of God. And we have to guard against that because we're called to be an all-in people that you shall have no other gods before me. The danger is, I think, we're praying for revival, which is a good thing. We're praying for God to pour out his spirit in our land. But at the same time, we're also saying, God, you're not quite good enough to be the very top priority. And so what I'll do is you'll be one of the priorities. You'll be one of the things that I want to be close to. But would you also send revival? It's not, how, it's not how it works. We need to be all in people. Because then when we're all in, I think God then turns around and says, you're all in, I'm all in, and let's see what happens. What we need is a move of God, but what we need before that is the people of God to be all in. It's an all in command that Jesus gives us. Love the God, Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. He leaves nothing to the imagination. It is everything that we have. The totality of our being needs to be invested in loving the Lord our God. And think of that phrase for a moment, the Lord our God. He's our God. Because of what Jesus did, he's not a God and he's, he's not a distant God. He is the Lord our God. He's ours and we are are his. So he calls us to love him with all of our hearts. The heart is the, the, the center of our personal being. This is where our will, our emotions, our desires, and our passions are. And scripture even says that, that where your treasure is, there your heart is. So if we treasure something above God, our heart will be there. But if we treasure God above all, that's where our heart will be. So loving God with all of our heart means that he is our treasure. 
We're like that man who found the treasure in a field and so he hid it and buried it and went away and sold everything that he had to buy this field because his treasure was hidden there. If our treasure is hidden in Christ, which scripture says that's where we are, in Ephesians, Paul writes to the church and says, you are now hidden. We're hidden. Actually, I think it's Colossians. One of them letters that Paul wrote, he says that you are now hidden in Christ. We're now seated in heavenly places. That's definitely in Ephesians. We're seated with him. We need to make sure that our treasure is there so our heart is there. We need to love him with our passions, love him with our desires, love him with our will. Because this type of love that he's not talking about is not just a feeling type of love. Because if if we're honest, there's days we wake up and I don't feel like praying. We don't feel like going to church. We don't feel like opening the scriptures. I don't feel like being a Christian today. There's days that we have those feelings, but this is not a love based on feelings. It's a love based on faith. We're called to live not by what we see, not by what is of the flesh, not not of what we feel, but by faith, by those things that we believe to be right. And so Every day we wake up, this love is a commitment love. It's like a marriage. You wake up every day, your feeling may be there, it may not be, but you've committed to this person. And so out of the commitment, love comes. And so every day, this commitment of the heart, that God, I love you with all of my heart, doesn't depend on whether I feel like loving God or not. It depends on the the decision that I make to love him. Today, my passion is gonna be him. I'm gonna desire him above all things because it's when we delight ourselves in the Lord that he gives us the desires of our hearts. The first part is that we have to delight ourselves in him. He needs to be our treasure. He needs to be everything to us. What really matters most to us needs to be him. It needs to be his presence. It needs to be knowing and getting to know him. What did Paul say? I count everything as loss. He didn't leave anything out. He didn't say, I count these things as loss. These things are still pretty good. I count everything as loss for the sake of knowing him. If we took that attitude and we took that heart that Paul had, God, I count everything as loss just for the sake of knowing who you are. I wonder what would happen. I wonder the difference in our lives, the difference in our families, the difference in our church and in our town. If the church of God rose up and says, God, I count everything as loss if it's not of you. I count everything as loss if it doesn't show that I love you. If I count everything as loss just for the sake of knowing him, we've got everything that we need. It's more than enough. It comes onto the soul. I want to love the Lord your God with all of your soul. This is the core you. This is the part of you that is, that is absolutely central to who you are. It's your life. It was when, when Adam was, was being created, it said that God breathed his breath into Adam and he became a living soul. So you and I now who who follow Jesus are living souls because before Jesus we're dead. Before Jesus there, there is no life because he is life. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is true life. So if we don't have Jesus, we don't have life. But it's that moment that we come to him that he breathes his breath into us and we become an eternal living soul. And so we're to love him with the part of us that is eternal and love him with the part of us that is central to who we are. So all of our life and all of our activities and all of our priorities need to be directed towards loving him. That's why why when in Matthew chapter six, it says, seek first the kingdom of God. It's what really matters because as we seek the kingdom, we're seeking both the king and we're seeking his priorities. The kingdom is the domain of the king. It's where the king lives. It's his reign and his rule. So if we seek the reign and rule of Jesus here on earth as it is in heaven, What we're doing is we're engaging our soul, we're engaging our life and our priorities and our activities in loving him. When his priorities become our priorities, impossible things happen, incredible things happen because all of a sudden we've aligned ourselves with God and how many of you know when when you're in the center of his will, when you pray according to his will, he hears and not just hears but he acts. What if we lived according to his will and we lived aligned to his will, then every step we take would be with his approval and his favor. 
Don't you want to be a people that carry his approval and his favor? Now, the beauty is that in Jesus, we carry his approval, but wouldn't you want every step that you make to showcase this love of God, that we're loving him with all of our souls? I want that. I want that for us as a church, that we are all in with the part of us that is eternal. It says to love us with all of our minds, and I think the danger is that sometimes we, we just disregard the mind in Christianity and think there's da- it's dangerous to be too intellectual. I, I know it. I'm, I'm so intellectual, it is, it is unfathomable. But English is incredible as well. But, but we're, we're taught to engage God with all of our mind. It's not wrong to be in, intelligent. In fact, I always think God encourages us to be intelligent with his scripture, not just, be, not just be mindless Christians, but even puts it in scripture to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, to, to love him with your intellect, but not just your intellect, to love him with your, this is, this is the, the challenge you want, to love him with your thoughts. I always think that, I remember a book being written by a famous preacher, The Battlefield of the Mind. It is a huge battlefield because thoughts when, when, when scripture talks about putting on the armor of God, I always think the fiery darts of the enemy. Personally, I take that as thoughts. I sometimes think those are the things that the enemy tries to put in, those little thoughts that can, if, if we allow them, can start planting in our minds. But our thoughts, we can love God with our thoughts. We can also show the opposite and show that we don't love God with our thoughts. Because our thoughts can all of a sudden become really unclean, really aggressive and offensive and filled with anger and pain. But God calls us to love him with all of our mind. And so what do we do? We need to make sure that our minds are transformed, that they're renewed. How does that happen? That happens by digging ourselves in and making his word become our thoughts. It says, these, think on these things. If it's good and it's pure and it's righteous and it's noble, think about these things. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. So to love God with all of our mind means to set your mind on him. Set your mind on the things that he would think about. Take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. I love the, the, the aggressiveness in the scripture. Take it captive, make it obedient. So when that thought comes in, you say, do you know what? I'm going to take that thought captive and you bow your knee to the name of Jesus. Sometimes you don't have to think about every thought that comes in your mind. You don't have to think of, if it comes in, it's not like you have to think about it. So a bad thought comes in, you don't have to entertain it. You can take it captive and make it obedient to Christ. And you change your thinking. It's what the word repentance means. It means to do a 180 and change the way you think. It doesn't just mean to say sorry. That's part of it is forgiveness that we need to repent of our sins. But it also means to repent and turn and think differently than you did before. We need to love God with all of our mind, all of our thoughts, our intellect. We need to love God with our dreams. It's not wrong to have a dream to do and be something. I always think God puts them there. We need to love God with those dreams that he gives us. It's part of being all in. The last one, Mark's gospel includes strength. It doesn't mean that we all have to be bodybuilders. Like, like Dave and Richard. We don't all have to look like that. <laughs> However much we want to. My prayer, I always wanted to be six foot two. Never going to happen. I'm still praying now. I'm 31. I think my dream's dying. It calls us to love him with our strength. Strength's an interesting word because strength in the Hebrew is the word very. Strength in the Greek is the word power and in the Aramaic is the word wealth. He's looking at not just everything that we are, loving God with all all of our being, but in this moment of strength, he's saying, you need to love God with everything that's at your disposal. Everything that you have, you need to love God with. That's that's your money and your your time and your, your marriage and your parenting and your grandparenting. That's your job. That's your computer and your phone. How challenging is that? We need to love God with the way we use our computers. We need to love God with the way that we use our phones. How much time do we spend on them? That hurts me a lot. We need to love God with everything that we have. So everything that you have, your talents, your abilities. How do we love God with everything that he's given to us? 
We need to love him with all of our strength. We need to make sure that nothing is left back from him. It's all or nothing. Always challenged by the scripture in Revelation about being cold and hot and lukewarm, that God would rather us be cold than lukewarm. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. It's the first and it's the greatest commandment that Jesus gives us. And if Jesus is going to say, this is the greatest commandment, then we need to listen to what he's going to say. And so he says, this is the greatest commandment. You'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. It's the pinnacle of Christianity. It's what, it's what our faith is about, is about loving God. And God's not after half-heartedness. He's not after dipping your toes in and, and then holding back. It's not a hokey-cokey Christianity that, that, that we're in and out of. It's all or nothing. And uh, my mind wanders and begins to dream. And I think, what could the church be if we were all in? If we loved God with everything that we have and everything that we are and everything that we have at our disposal? Because God wants a fully committed, cross-bearing, name-carrying people. It's what he wants. Is full commitment. I'll give my full commitment to Man United through thick and thin. But what scares me is that times when God doesn't answer my prayers, I doubt him. It's frightening when you think about it, isn't it? There are things in life that we would never doubt. And yet something happens, someone upsets us in church and all of a sudden it's God's fault. We're called to be an all-in people. The truth is that I don't even think that us loving God is actually the most important thing. It's actually not what really matters most. I think what matters above this is the truth that before this, God loved us. The scripture says that we love because he first loved loved us. The reason that we can love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength is because he made a decision about you and me. He made a decision to descend onto earth, an earth filled with sin and darkness. He made a decision to leave his glorious state and enter in as a man, to live a life among men and women that were lost. He came to seek and save He made a decision then to follow the will of God that led to the cross so that on that cross he would die for us and as us, as our substitute, so that we would have the opportunity to make a decision to be all in. Why? Because he has been all in on us from the very get-go. He is all in on you. He loves you with everything that you have and everything that you are and everything that he gives you. He loves you beyond anything that you can imagine. That's why he made a decision to die for you. But the amazing truth is that he did not stay dead. He died for three days and then on the third day he rose again in his glorious state because he defeated death. He defeated the grave. He defeated sin. And now it's scripture says, oh death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? Because now victory belongs to him. Way before we're all in, he's all in. Way before we loved him, he chose to love us us. So we now sit here this morning as ones who are loved. And our response has to be to love with everything that we have back. He did not hold anything back from us, nor will he hold anything back from us. He never held back forgiveness. He never held back grace or mercy or love. He gave it all. Scripture says he lavishes us with grace. He lavishes us with love. He goes as far as to now call us his children, co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We now belong to him because he was all in. It is all because of Jesus. It is the gospel that we're looking at this morning. Everything we talk about from this platform is the good news of Jesus. 
Before we can love him, he loved us. He said, while we were still sinners, in our worst state, in our darkest moments, his love shines brighter than any storm. It defeats any enemy. It goes further than anything we can comprehend. His love for us is so strong. I love the scripture that God is for us. Before we were for him, before we even made a decision to be all in, God was all in on us. And nothing you can do will ever change his mind. However far you walk away, it won't change him running back to you. Whatever you think you've done wrong, his love has not been defeated or weakened. He's all in on you. So much so that he gave himself. There is no greater love than a friend laying down his life. He calls us friend. The God who created the heavens and the earth. The God who raises the dead and heals the sick and opens the blind eyes. The God who knows everybody's name that has been, that is, and that will still be born. The God who flung stars into space and speaks and suns come out. He is all in on you. He's all in on Southport. The job of the church is to be all in people for God. And as we are all in for him, he'll pour out his spirit. I'm absolutely convinced that when the church rises up in holiness and in righteousness that is clothed with the power of God, that is all in on, on God, 100% I'm convinced that we'll see transformation everywhere we go. How can we not? Our God is the God of transformation. It calls us to love him with everything that we have. Everything that we have. I think what really matters is, is, is shown by one word. And I think this word is really key because it's something that happens every single day. Nobody is exempt from, from this one word. We, we, we do thousands of them in, in almost moments of a day. And, and the, the, the result of this word makes a declaration of if we love God or not. It makes a declaration of whether we're all in or not. And the, the word is choices. Every day we are faced with upwards of 35,000 choices. I'm going to go out on a limb and say every single one of them makes a declaration of where our allegiance lies. The decision to stay in bed instead of get up and pray. The decision to, to say those things to that person instead of holding your tongue. The decision to allow those thoughts to fester instead of taking them captive. The decision of how you spend your time and, and where you put your money. The decision of how you act around your spouse and your kids. These are all choices that we make and they either show that we love God and that we're all in with heart, soul, mind and strength or that maybe that we are some in, or maybe that we're not in at all. See, God made a choice over us. And now every day we make a choice over ourselves, over our families, over our church, but ultimately we are making choices about where our love is. I wonder if the band would come back and join us for the, just for the last moment, because this is, this is really crucial, because I want us to pray through uh, a few different things this morning. Because we're faced with choices every day and we're, we're faced with the, the consequences of those choices. And these, the, our choices really will show what really matters to us. But ultimately, the, the, the most important choice that, that we and anyone can make is the choice to follow Jesus. Everything begins and ends with Jesus. Every sermon we preach is about him. Every song we sing is about him because he's all we have. He's way more than we deserve. He's all we will ever need. It is all about Jesus, but there's a choice to make. And whether you, you believe there is a God or not, ultimately one day scripture says we will stand before him and give an account. And at that moment, it's too late to make a choice. 
I think there's got to be an urgency in, in our time now about encouraging people to make a decision. Because there has to be a choice now before our time ends on earth because it's too late then. The decision today that, that we need to make, that we need to choose is, is do we follow Jesus or not? So I wonder if you'd close your eyes with me for a moment. And we're going to pray as a church in a moment. But this, we do this every week. If you're here this morning and you've never made this choice to follow Jesus, you've never made the choice to, to, to be a Christian, to receive everything that he has for you, this is, this is the moment. This is your time. This is a great opportunity to, to make that decision. He is all in on you. This is the choice that you make to, to be all in on him. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray a very simple prayer. And I'm going to ask that in the, in the quiet of your heart, you, you pray along with me if you want to make this choice this morning. You ready? Father, I recognize that you are all in on me. That you love me. That you loved me before I was born. That you knitted me together and made me. Today I want to make the choice to follow Jesus. Recognizing that he died for me and that he now lives for me. Would you come? Would you forgive my sin? Would you create in me a clean heart? Would today be the day that I walk into life? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, just while, while your eyes are closed and your head's bound, if you made that decision this morning, if you've made this choice today to, to say, yeah, I'm going to be all in for the first time, would you just quickly pop your hand up and back down again? We can see it and then just help you along this journey that you've made a choice for. So if that's you, would you just, in these, in these next few moments, would you just pop your hand up? There's only me that can see. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I don't want this moment to pass without anybody feeling they have the, this opportunity to make a choice. Just 10 more seconds. If you're here today, he's all in on you. Maybe you want to make that choice to be all in. Father, thank you. Thank you that you are all in on us. God, thank you for this lady that has made a decision to follow you. And we pray, God, that you would protect her. We pray over the coming days that you, you would surround her with good people. You would open up your word to her. And you would bless her in Jesus' name. A church, there's two things I want to pray. One is an individual one, and we've got the time to do this. It's great. One, this is an individual one. Every single one of us can point to choices that we've made that did not make a declaration of our love for God. And many of us can point to choices that we're still making right now that, that don't make this, this choice. And in this moment, what I want us to do is, is repent. Such an old biblical word, but it's so powerful and so important. I think it's what God calls us to constantly and consistently to do, is to repent, to have our mind changed constantly, to constantly come back to him, to turn from the ways that aren't of him and turn into the ways that are. So this morning, I want you to pray with me just for one minute. You'll know the choices that you've made and they're making. But I believe that God has power that can break bonds and can break chains and can break yokes. It's, an, it's his anointing that breaks the yoke. And he's here this morning. So would you pray with me for a moment? Father, thank you that you're all in on us. And at times we're all in on you, but there are times, God, that I make choices that say the opposite to what sometimes my mouth says and sometimes my heart feels. So today, Father, I want to repent before you. Asking for your strength and your courage for us to make the choices that showcase our love for you. Thank you that you fill us with your spirit. You fill us with your power. So today, God, we ask that you would fill us again. You'd give us boldness to make those choices that we know are right. And you give us boldness to stop making the choices that we know are wrong. God, we turn from those ways. And we turn back to you in all these different areas. 
We want to make sure every room of our home is open for you to enter, that there are no secret hidden closets in our home. Thank you that you're faithful and just to forgive. Thank you that you're the God of the second chance. And thank you that when we repent, God, you are so, so kind and so, so good to us. Thank you for your mercy that you are lavishing upon us, the mercy that is new every morning. I pray that you would transform us in Jesus' name. The last thing I want to do is a church thing. Because we're a body, we're a family, and so there's certain things we need to do together. And what I'm going to ask us to do in a moment is stand together and grab the person next to you. And we're going to pray that we would be an all-in kind of church. We're going to pray that, that we would make decisions that are all in. We're going to pray that everything that we do as a church shows that we love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And we're going to pray that as we are an all-in church, God would pour out His Spirit upon our church and upon our town. Because what we are desperately praying for is that the glory of the Lord would fill our town like the waters cover the sea. That the knowledge of who he is would flood where we live. It would flood our lives. It would flood our offices. It would flood our homes. It would flood our town and our businesses and its streets. That people would begin to know who he is just through us walking through the streets. That happens when we become an all-in kind of people, when we make what really matters really matter. So let's stand together. This is an opportunity for us to pray together. I'm going to pray, you're going to pray. We're going to all lift up our voices and it will sound like a heavenly mess. And that's okay. But we want to be an all-in people because that's what really matters, that we are all in with Jesus. Let's not hold anything back. Church, lift up your voice. Let's pray. Father, we're all in. We want to be all in, but we need your spirit. We need your power. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill us again. Fill us again. (coughs) We need you. We recognize we can't do this apart from you. Our strength, our might, our abilities are not going to cut it in seeing our town and our families and our nation transformed. But your power on your people will produce your results. We want to see this town revived and awakened. We want to see your church awakened. And so we are crying out with hunger today. Help us, Holy Spirit, be all in kind of people. Help us love you with all of our heart, all of our desires and our passions. Help us love you with all of our soul, all our activities and our priorities. Help us love you with all of our mind, our intellect, our thoughts, our dreams. Help us love you with all our strength, everything that we have, our time, our talents, uh, everything uh, that, that is in our possession. Help us love you with it all. Help us be an all-in people. It is only going to be by your spirit. And it's only going to be because of you. Thank you, God. You're so, so good to us. You're so, so good. Father, we want to say again, thank you for loving us so unconditionally, so passionately, so sacrificially. Today, we want to make this decision to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. We recognize this is what really matters in our faith. It's putting you first in your rightful position as the king, as the Lord, as the sovereign righteous one. There is none like you. And I pray our lives will reflect that there is none like you. Fill us again with your spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
I don't know about you this morning, but I, I feel really challenged by God this morning. And I want to encourage you. I, I, want, I want you to do something for me. Just today when you go home, find some time today to just take a few moments out and to really think about how you as an individual can be even more all in with Jesus and for Jesus. So many times we just let the busyness of life, as soon as we walk out of church, everything just disappears and we just go straight back in the, the way that we are. And I just want to encourage you, find those moments today, individually, and spend, spend some time with God, letting Him illuminate those things in your life that you need to, to really prioritize. I'm just going to pray. Lord, we just thank you this morning for for your blessings upon us all, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for, for Pastor Matt and for the word that he has brought us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for speaking through him again to us, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that we, that we really take it on board, Lord, in each of our lives, Lord. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that, that as, as we head out today, Lord, that you, you go with us, Lord, you bless us, 
but Lord, that we, that we keep our focus on you, Lord. We just pray this in your wonderful, glorious name. Amen. Amen. Guys, just a few things as you leave. Don't forget that we have coffee and tea upstairs. So please spend some time together. Um, but also, these little alpha cards are, are sitting up on, on, on the desk in the foyer. So please take them and use them. And the sign-up seats for the, for the groups, the life groups as well, are in the foyer over to the right. Thank you so much. God bless you all.